Altair was the first protagonist in the Assassin's Creed franchise, and yet many people seem to overlook Altair, and I've seen many people call him boring and claiming that he has no character development, and I couldn't disagree more. Personally, for me, Altair is one of my favorite protagonists in the Assassin's Creed franchise, and he's up there with the likes of Ezio and Bayek. So in this video, I'm going to explain just why Altair is actually a really great protagonist, and why he's so underrated by the community. I'll also be talking about Altair's arc in both Assassin's Creed 1 and Revelations, so if you have not played any of those games yet for some reason, then there will be spoilers ahead. Altair's journey begins during the Third Crusade in 1191. This is the beginning of the first Assassin's Creed, and the game starts with Altair completely breaking all three tenets of the Assassin's Creed, as he kills an innocent man, exposes himself to the enemy, and endangers and gets one of his fellow assassins killed. Altair was born into the Brotherhood and was granted the rank of Master Assassin at the age of 24. He was the youngest assassin to be granted Master, and yet when it came to an actual mission, one of great importance at that, he threw away everything that he lived by and learned and let his ego take over, which led to his failure to recover the Apple of Eden from Robert de Sable. Altair was young, foolish, and had a big ego, yet he had great potential, but his brash and arrogant attitude was preventing him from reaching it. When Al-Mualim discovered that Altair had broken all the tenets of the creed, he stripped him of his rank and forced him to start over as a novice, and this is when Altair's true development arc began. As he worked to restore his rank and honor, he became more aware of his wrongdoings, and work to prove to himself and the other assassins that he's worthy to be part of the Brotherhood. As Altair assassinated Templar leadership under the direct command of Al-Mualim, he began to learn and see the world from a different perspective. With each Templar he killed, he realized that not everything is as simple as good and evil. His whole life, he had always believed that the assassins were the good guys who were going to magically bring world peace and save the world. When he learned the Templars also strived for peace, he began to question the true intentions of the assassins and Al-Mualim. Altair's development in just this small span of Assassin's Creed 1 has more development and character growth than more than half of the other Assassin's Creed protagonists. He became smart and aware of what the Assassins and Templars were, and learned that there is no good or bad, only the truth, and Altair began to fight for the truth and to ensure that the Assassin Order was of pure intention. After Altair finally killed Robert de Sable in his quest of redemption, he discovered that Al-Mualim, his own mentor, had sent Altair to kill the Templars so that Al-Mualim could have the power of the Apple of Eden for himself. Al-Mualim had used the Apple to control the assassins, however it didn't work on Altair because of his ability to think for himself and to find the truth. And what was once his biggest weakness in independence at the beginning of the game developed into his greatest strength and Altair was able to redeem himself by forgetting his selfish ways and ego and fight for the free will of his brothers and the truth. Another huge testament to Altair's growth was at the very end of Assassin's Creed 1. When he defeated Al-Mualim, he was able to refuse using the Apple of Eden for power and control, and instead used it for knowledge and to safeguard people's free will, which is something Altair certainly wouldn't have been able to do at the beginning of the game. Altair's arc is then wrapped up in Assassin's Creed Revelations, as it shows what happens in glimpses after the events of Assassin's Creed 1. For a while, Altair served as mentor of the Brotherhood until he was betrayed by an assassin by the name of Abbas, who had both his son and wife killed. Abbas seized control of the Brotherhood and Altair was cast out of the Brotherhood and exiled. Throughout this entire period, ever since the end of Assassin's Creed, Altair held on to the Apple and had refused the urge to control others with it. But when Abbas tried to take it from Altair, he became enraged and wanted revenge. But his wife, in her final moments, reminded Altair that he should only seek the truth, not revenge. Altair would then return to Masyaf Castle nearly 20 years later at the age of 82. And as the Assassin's Creed was on the verge of collapse, Altair rallied many assassins to his cause as they stormed Masyaf Castle and killed Abbas and his corrupted followers. It's really crazy to think that this young and arrogant kid from the beginning of Assassin's Creed became this old and wise mentor and leader by the end of Assassin's Creed Revelations. I mean, even his accent changed. You any final words? You lied to me. You called Robert's goal foul, and all along it was yours as well. Taken that archive on Cyprus. Abbas sent no reinforcements. It was a massacre. 
and while he never learned how to swim, he made up for it with his awareness and wisdom and was able to restore the Assassin's Creed and form it into what we know in the later Assassin's Creed games, where Altair established bureaus all around the globe to preserve and protect free will and the truth. Altair has one of my favorite arcs in video games and of the Assassin's Creed series, and is only one of two protagonists where we see their full story beginning to end. Altair doesn't have the charisma or likable qualities like Edward, Ezio, and Arno, but he's so powerful, deadly, and badass that I really don't see how you couldn't become invested in his story and how he formed the Assassin's Creed. I think a main reason why people seem to overlook Altair and label him as underdeveloped and boring is because they don't understand his full story and just how big and important he is to the Assassin's Creed franchise. I can understand why he may not be many people's favorite protagonist in Assassin's Creed, but he certainly has one of the best arcs and is a very well fleshed out and developed character. And that's why I think Altair is severely underrated by the Assassin's Creed community. If you agree or disagree, I want to hear what you think down in the comments and feel free to let me know what protagonist you would like me to analyze next. If you want to discuss Assassin's Creed with me and others, feel free to join my Discord, the link is in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's see if we can hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of February. Other than that, thanks for watching and have a great day, Assassins.